It's been a few months now and I've been using Photoshop's AI generative fill and it keeps getting better and better. You can change hair color, you can turn a frown into a subtle smile, or you can transport your dog from a house to an open field. I'm gonna walk you through about 20 different ways to use Photoshop generative fill. But enough talking, my name's Shai, let's jump right in. All right, so for every photo, we wanna make sure that we duplicate a layer. So go to layer up here, hit duplicate layer, then okay. And so now your duplicate layer is here and we can get to work. So for this particular picture, I wanna add facial hair on this guy. So I'm using my lasso tool. I'm just gonna draw a goatee around this guy's face. Hit generative fill. Let's type in facial hair. Hit generate. Not bad, I like that this was actually just subtle, but it does give you three options. This one looks pretty. Now, if you did wanna change this, maybe make it thicker, you could redo the prompt here uh, and go forward from there. But I'm pretty satisfied with just subtle right here. So this is what it looks like without and with a little facial hair. Now let's push the limits here a little bit. It's raining, this guy's a little sad. Let's see if we can make him look happy. So let's select around his mouth. Hit generate. Oh, let's type in smile. Hit generate. We got three options here. Not bad, that's a real subtle smile here. So let's see the before and after. So it went from a little mad to sad to a subtle smile. Not bad, that's pretty clean. Let's see if we can put some sunglasses on this guy. So we're gonna use our lasso tool. Just draw around the eyes. Hit generative fill, type in sunglasses and hit generate. And you'll get here. This one's pretty cool, kind of matches the outfit. And if you weren't happy with it, you could always go into the prompt here and retype something different. But right, let's take it a step further. Maybe I want this guy to be wearing a suit instead. Hit general. Let's type in black suit and tie. Hit generate. Let's see how formal we can get here. Not bad. Um, not sure why the tie is messed up here, but let's see our other options. Ooh, that one looks pretty slick. Third one's not bad also. I'll go with this one. Or actually, I'll go with the third one here. Next is your subject might have something on their face, maybe a scar, an imperfection. So let's use our lasso tool again and just go around this scar this gentleman has and let's see if we can remove it. Back in the day, this would have taken a bit of time to remove, but now with AI, let's see how quick it is. Hit generative fill, no prompt needed, let's hit generate. And now Photoshop does give you tips after you hit generate, so feel free to read through these and see if these help you out. That's pretty darn amazing. I did miss a little spot at the bottom, so next time, you know, just make sure you get every little piece that you're trying to remove but we have three options here. And I have to admit that is pretty cool. So this is the before and this is the after. So here there might be some slight imperfections on the skin as well. Maybe a mole, maybe a pimple. So for something small like that, let's get our lasso tool again. Circle around here, hit shift so I can make multiple selections. A slight scarring on the forehead here, nose. Once I've made my selections, I'm going to hit Generative Fill, Generate, no prompt. If you look at the before and after, so much quicker to work with skin now with Generative Fill AI. Let's say we want to change eye color on someone. I'm going to use the lasso tool again, and I'm just going to select around her eyes. She has these here. I'm gonna hit Shift since I'm on a Mac. So I can make two selections. Hit Generative Fill. I'm gonna type in brown eyes instead. Let's hit Generate. Get three options here. Let's see which one looks better. I like this third one here, it's pretty cool. So really quick, easy way to change eye color here. Now let's see if we can change this girl's hairstyle. 
So just as well with the lasso tool, I'm going to trace around her hair. Over here. All right, let's go really wild, hit generative fill, and let's type in pink hair. Hit generate. Ooh, that's cool. And let's see our other options. Nah. Nah. This one's pretty cool. Now, it is a little dark in the middle here, so let's see if we can fix that up a little bit. Shape around there. Hit generative fill. Let's type in pink hair. Generate. Got some different options here. Maybe that one in the middle. Spread that pink a little more. Not exactly perfect, but it does take a little exploring and testing things out. But overall, totally changed the look of our model here. Pretty cool. Next is you can now remove the background and take this subject and do whatever you need with it. And it's done in such a quicker way now. So literally, there's now a remove background button. So once you hit that, I'm going to go to our select button here, our move tool. And literally now you have your subject traced out and you can move this around or superimpose it on another image. By the way, have you felt that your content could use a bit of an upgrade? You can definitely level up with the right plugins from Motion VFX. It's the game changer you've been looking for. From jaw-dropping 3D social media icons that give your videos that extra pop to captivating call to action options that help drive that engagement. Or maybe you need some sweet text options that ensure your message is not just heard, but it's also seen and remembered. Or you might need some smooth transitions that lets you flow when you're telling your next epic story. Now the best part, Motion VFX always has discounts on their website. So quality doesn't always have to burn a hole in your pocket. So whether you're a seasoned YouTuber or just starting out, these plugins are an amazing way to elevate your content. And by the way, I dropped some direct links in the description box below, so I hope you dive in, check them out, and I can't wait to see your videos shine with Motion VFX. Now back to our regular scheduled program, and why don't we use one of those cool transitions? So let's see if we can put a necklace on our model here. So I'm going to use the lasso tool. and Just draw a necklace around her. Fill. Let's type in pearl necklace. Hit generate. And let's see what options we have here. Not bad. And if you notice, it's pretty cool. It even has shadows on it. So it's the AI is accounting for the light in this photo as well. I like this middle one here. This looks very realistic. So you can also add subjects to your scene. So let's say, for example, we want to draw a coffee mug here. Hit generative fill. Let's type in coffee mug. Hit generate. Got different options here. Maybe you want a phone. Let's hit generative fill. Type in smartphone. Hit generate. So it said it did not recognize that prompt, so let's hit generative fill again. Let's type in cell phone. So you got to play around a little bit. Hit generate. And now we got different options for a cell phone here. And again, the thing that fascinates me with this AI is that it accounts for the lighting. So if you notice, it's a little brighter here because the light's coming from the lamp and it's a little darker here where there's a shadow. So sky's the limit if you're adding different props and things that you want in your photo. Really cool feature. So let's pretend we don't want this guy here. We want him at the beach. So there's a quick and easy way you can just select the subject. So it'll select our main subject here. And then you can hit inverse and then hit generative fill. And let's say we want this guy actually at the beach. So let's put in beach, perhaps sunny beach and hit generate. And instantly we have transported this guy to the beach. We have different options here, even accounts for the shadow on the ground, did keep the sun. So super cool features with Photoshop AI. So let's say you're trying to change up this scene a little bit. Maybe you want to add some succulents or some roses here on the side and remove these lights. 
Let's go ahead and use our lasso tool again. Let's kind of just trace around where we would want some plants. I'm gonna go pretty wide around here and let's type in, in generative fill, succulents. Hit generate. And we got several options. I like this third one. So it gives us a little bit different feel to our scene here by putting some succulents and removing those lights. All right, so I was out shooting this day, calibrating my gimbal here, but let's say I don't like the cracks on the cement here. So I'm just gonna go around it with my lasso tool. And let's see if we can remove all of these cracks. I'm gonna hit generative fill, no prompt, and just hit generate. So if you want to clean it up, of course, you can go around the other cracks, but you can ma manipulate concrete, even the dirt here. So really quick to fix up your scene here. Now you might want to change your sky. So I'm going to hit my lasso tool. Just trace around the mountain here. Hit generative fill. I'm going to type in beautiful clouds and sun rays. And let's see what we get. Well, we do get a few options here. It's a little over the top here maybe, but I'll go with the first one here just to add a little clouds. Now there's some trash cans here. We can select those and just hit generate and remove those. But let's say I wanted to add some water here. I'm just gonna trace around and I'm gonna type in stream. So hit generative fill, type in stream, and hit generate. That looks pretty realistic here. Uh, we got different options. So you can add a little water, you can change your sky. In fact, let's add a little grass here. Let's make it a little bit more green. Hit generative fill. I'm gonna type in green grass field. Hit generate. So sky's the limit when you're dealing with nature. You can add grass, you can add water, you can manipulate the sky. So if we look, here's our before and our after. Just getting really creative with making nature look beautiful. So let's say we want to make this landscape. I'm gonna hit the crop selection here and just go as far out as I want the photo to stretch. I'm gonna hit our selection tool here. And look how quick and easy that made our photo. It accounted for the train here. Now you can see like a little line here, but it's not too obvious. And here too on the dress, but let's see what the other options look like. Not bad. So you might shoot something vertically and you can switch it to horizontal. So let's say we want to transport our dog here to a different location, not just the backyard near the garage. So we can just select our subject very quickly and then hit inverse. So it'll actually select the background. Let's hit generative fill. And where do we want to place her? Let's put her open field and hit generate. So we get several options. So pretty cool. So rather than just being in the backyard, we are now in an open field, happy and in nature. All right, so let's say we want to change our scene here a little bit. I like the reflection of the building in the water. So maybe we can expand on that. Hit generative fill and put reflection of building in the water and hit generate. And we do get several options. I like this one. A little subtle, but the cool thing is it did remove all the imperfections here on the street and just a little more aesthetic with a building and the reflection here. That's a wrap for today's tutorial. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. 
and hit that notifications bell for more content. Feel free to leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below. And if you're interested in more tutorials or product reviews, stick around and check out some of my other videos. Keep creating and I'll see you on the next video.